Hi, Troy at the Full Setup here, back with another video today. And today I'm going to briefly show you the motherboard for my um, upcoming build that I'm working on at the moment. And there's going to be loads of videos over the next week, so please have a look. Now, if you want to see the motherboard, please just skip onto the video. This is for the channel guys and anyone that likes me, so here you go. Now, recently you may have seen that I've got my um, behind me, my eight, which is in pieces as well, my AMD 880K entry-level gaming build, which I love. It's great, um, and it's had loads of good comments, so thanks but it's really bad for video editing. It's making my life a hell. So I decided I needed a workstation, but I didn't have mega amounts of money to lay down for like the beginning of it. I've got enough spare parts, but to get like a board processor and RAM, I didn't have too much money, like maybe four or 500 pounds max. Um, so then I was on YouTube and I seen everyone raving about this E5 2670 eight core, I think it's like a Sandy Bridge or Ivy Lake processor, um, and how you should buy it because it's 70 pound, it's like wicked, you can do like loads of really good video editing on it and it's really good for gaming as well and it's a beast and fair play, like it is good and all those videos I've seen are brilliant but there's a massive issue with that and that is that you need to source yourself an X79 motherboard. Um, which is really hard to get in the UK because bear in mind everything you're going to buy is second hand, three, four years old. Um, the ones for £150, they were like bent, battered, like one of them had a PCI slot missing and then all the decent ones were like £200 plus and it's just me trusting that someone's looked after it, um, which I didn't really want to do. So I've gone a slightly different route um, and I've bought an MSI X99A SLI plus motherboard which is running on a lot newer architecture um, this was actually an open box one it didn't come with an IO shield and MSI is sending that out at the moment so again a little bit of trust but I paid £100 for this and then for the processor which is an engineering sample it's not an official I shouldn't have been able to buy a processor um, it's an E5 2670 again but this one's a 12 core um, with a massive 30 megabytes 30 or 40 megabytes of cash so yeah I paid £280 for this which would have been the same amount of money I would have paid for the older version. So I think this is a lot better way to go. So, if you want to see the bills and everything that's going on with that and some benchmarks, please subscribe over to the channel. They're coming over the next few weeks. Got the case coming out tomorrow. Already got the RAM temporary cooler as well for it. Um, a couple of bits coming out. So, lots of videos this weekend. But for all the people that have come over that want to have a closer look at this motherboard and all the inputs, outputs, everything that's on it, I will try and show the best. I'm going to take you in for a closer look. So anyone that's seen my motherboard videos before, you um, know that I do like to do it sort of two halves at a time so we can get everything in shot and it looks a bit closer. So that's why you can't see the bottom half of the board. Um, let's just have a little look at the IO first as well. I can't wait till MSI send the IO shield out. They said it should be about two weeks, um, which means taking my whole PC apart again once the new stuff comes in. So. First here we have, we've got two USB 2.0s um, and then you've got the PS2 slot as well um, and then this little button here is a clear CMOS button. Then what it looks like there is here is eight USB 3.0s but they're not. These two, there's actually six, is USB 3.1, you'll see the sticker in a minute. Then we have Gigabyte Ethernet, um, you saw a seven channel audio and then you have an optical toss link as well which is... Um, good if you want got anything that's got optical on it but that's uh, is going to limit you these days up to DTS you won't be able to do DTS HD with that because it hasn't got the bandwidth so let's get this board into position so I try and get you a little bit closer all right so we'll start with the top half of the board so firstly here we have a four pin um, CPU fan. This is CPU fan two. So there's two. So obviously, if you there's two um, CPU fan headers, which is great. Um, if you're using like sort of push pull rads with loads of fans as well, you've got the room for that. Now here, what you have is the two banks of the uh, RAM slots as well, um, which are rated up to DDR 3200 megahertz, I think. And then, God, if you put 16 gig sticks in all these, you could have 128 gig. But I don't think you're ever going to need that RAM. I've gone for 32 gig for now. I've got um, four. Um, Sticks of Cossier Vengeance LPX DDR4. Now this is rated to 2600 megahertz, but with the Xeon, you're not going to be able to push it past 2100. But the reason I wanted to show you the RAM is what's a bit different with this is, firstly, you've only got one pull slot up here, which I thought was well weird, is that the way that these are banked together, I think anyone that's normally built a PC build, you'd say the next one's got to go in here, right? Yeah, that's how you get it for dual channel. It goes over here for some reason but I really like that because I've got four then it goes this one and this one it means I've got like two back next to each other each side over the, um, 
each side of my cooler, which I think looks fantastic as well. So I really like that feature. Now up at the top here, all your basically your voltage, currents, everything is being sort of regulated is under this nice heat sink. It's not here because we've got the RAM and then just snuck behind it there. So you can see there's the eight pin power. And then you have the X99 socket. And this is why I'm glad I've gone with the X99. Although I'm taking the risk in having the um, engineering sample processor and it won't be quite as good as the actual launch processor, I've given myself the option for so many more processors. When the Xeon starts to jump price in 18 months, I could put one in there. Well, I've got the um, up, up, upcoming um, Skylake E processors, are they? Or the Broadway e, Broadwell E processors that can all go in this? Just loads of options and you know it's a lot newer architecture so I think it's a lot better, a lot safer and I've ended up actually spending the same amount of money and got a better deal. Up at the top here there's another CPU fan and then there's a system fan, um, both 4 pin PWM, that's system fan 1 so we've already got 3 fan headers just up here. Isn't this wicked? Um, then you've got the 24 pin power, then you've got a USB 3.0 as well, USB 3.1 header. And let's start taking up to the top of the board. So maybe if I get you round to see all the SATA ports. So here we have another USB 3.0 header. So you can see that. And then I've got eight SATA Express ports as well. Not SATA Express, SATA 6 gigabytes a second ports. Then you have the um, X99 chipset, all nice and cooled as well. The crate version of this in white and black looks fantastic as well. Um, now we have the um, SLI, so as you can see we've got four PCI Expresses, although I'm a worried about these two because they're quite close to each other. Then we have um, a standard just PC, um, PCI Expresses. These are PCI Express um, 16, they're all rated to, um, but if you've got a CPU which takes you up to 40 lanes, I think that's got 40 lanes, and you can have two running at 16, if not, you know, it goes down, you've got some running, at, they'll go down to eight or down to four, blah de blah de blah but these two... For quad SLI, they look a bit close together. I don't know how you get that to work. It must have to be water cooling. Um, and then you've got the M.2 port as well. And if you use the M.2, um, it does cancel out. You'll see down here there's a SATA Express ports. Um, it cancels those out as well. And then there's just various jumpers for the CMOS and then just a standard PCI slot as well. Right, let's try and take you down to the bottom. I'm going to try and get you a bit closer again for this, right down the bottom ports. So here we have, I've got this all in shot, system fan number two, I'm still not sure what that actually is, um, then there's also a dual BIOS switch here as well which is a lovely feature, then we've got this SATA Express which I explained earlier, probably doesn't work if you have the M.2, then we've got two USB 2.0 jumpers, um, ports for adding those as well, so that's another four USB 2.0, so you can have six of those in total, the two already included. Um, then the actual, these two here, these two jumpers are actually all your power and hard drive and stuff. Bit weird, I've never seen them split into two before. And then down here we have the Overclock Genie, um, which you can just set for automatic overclocks, which isn't going to work on my Xeon. Um, and then you've got power and reset buttons, which I've loved this because I haven't had to jump it with my pen or my keys because it's not in a case at the moment. Um, then over here, even more various different jumpers, J Turbo, loads of. There's jumpers everywhere on this. I just can't remember what they all are. I'm sorry. Um, and then we have System Fan 3 and then the audio as well. So that is about everything that's on this board. Probably sounded like a complete jumble to all of you. But anyone looking at buying it, if this has helped you out, I hope it has. And if you want to see the build and everything that's going on, the more um, benchmarking and gaming and how I love it for video editing, please go over to the channel.